Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Miss Gemini Cooking Made Easy, and I am your girl, Miss Ish. Today, I'm going to be preparing a corned beef brisket with some fried cabbage on the side. I'm also going to show you all the ingredients I'm going to use. Now, you know you're always welcome to tweak them, so let's go ahead and get started. So let me guys, um, show you guys real quick what I'm going to be using, okay? Now, today I have this corned beef brisket. Tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day, so I'm going to go ahead and get everything started now. I have this small brisket, um, corned beef brisket, that was about $4.88, okay? It breaks down to a lot, so you don't really need a big one all the time. Now, I know you guys seen those old recipes where your great-grandma or your family members back in the days used to make that corned beef and put that cabbage inside it, and y'all used to be like, oh, that was so good. Well... I got OCD, so I won't eat it like that. What I usually do is take my corned beef after I clean it and season it and put everything in the crock pot with the onions and bell pepper and garlic. I let that slow cook for about 10 hours. Then I'm going to put the, that meat on top of some hoagie rolls or um, cut some Hawaiian bread. And then I'll fry the cabbage on the side. Now with the cabbage, you have a choice, as always, to tweak it. I have some bok choy here that I'm going to fry, but then I also have this fry, um, this bag of the coleslaw, which is nothing but the cabbage and carrots cut up in a bag. So I'm going to work smarter, not harder, instead of having to cut that up because my hand is kind of damaged. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to take this corned beef, place it in the crock pot. I'm going to fry the cabbage up last, and then I'm going to fry that bok choy with a little sausage. Now, after days go by and you're tired of eating the corned beef um, like that, you can always make some mashed potatoes and eat it on top with some gravy, okay? Now, of course, for my seasoning, I'm always going to be using that Malibu seasoning, some black pepper, some garlic, and then this butcher's, I think it's called butcher's seasoning. It's good for like rib tips, roast, pork chops, things of that nature. So, these are just my main ingredients. I'm going to get this corned beef clean get it in the crock pot and then we'll be back in about five hours just to check on it okay so what i went ahead and done it was make sure i rinse my crock pot out and put it on high just for now so it can just start steaming i'm going to take my red and green bell peppers i'm not going to chop them or slice them in chunks i'm just going to leave them kind of in big slices now, you know, usually when I make my videos, I fry and simmer all of my vegetables first. But since this is going to be cooking for about 10 hours, I'm just going to take all of these and just throw them inside my crock pot, okay? And now with the onion, I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to make big chunks. Now, what I'll do is leave some out and then I'll put them on top, okay? Okay. So, and I'll make sure I let you guys see everything. Now, we're going to do the same with the green bell pepper. Just cut it in half and make about, probably can make about seven or eight of them with that. And then I'll probably go in at the end and put a half of bell pepper, um, another green one in, okay? So, now let's go ahead and um, get everything inside the pot. So since I went ahead and put some of the red bell peppers in, I'm going to go ahead with a spoonful of minced garlic. And now I'm going to take the rest of my vegetables and just start to add them inside. Okay. Now the next step I'm going to do is get this corned beef open. Now let me move the crock pot back just for a second so I can show you guys. Now usually... Um, when you buy your meat, of course, you know, when it's pre-packaged, you clean it first and everything. This has already been cleaned and seasoned. I'm not sure if you can see from the light, but it has um, marinade in it already. So the only thing I really need to do is if I wanted just to open it and then take some of the fat off and then place it inside. But since this doesn't have um, a lot of fat on it. I'm still going to go ahead and just take a little bit of that part and some of this part off and then place it in the crock pot. And then once we do that, we're going to put the lid on it and we're going to forget about it. So we'll be right back. All right, just to give you guys a little example of what I mean about taking this piece of the fat off. You'll do the same if this was a regular beef brisket as well. You always want to cut against the grain, um, but then you want to make sure that your hand isn't in a way to get cut. But... I've been cooking for years, so I'm kind of 
I'm not going to say I'm a pro at it because anybody can get cut. Um, you guys can't see that, but I've cut through my nerve and my tenant years ago. So you may notice that I hold the um, the fork or the utensils a certain way. Well, that's because I cut through my hand, um, my nerve and my tenant. But it was with <laughs> trying to open a can and decided, you know, not to use the whole can opener all the way and call myself trying to pull it up and it messed my hand up for life so you know i gotta deal with it you know but it's not gonna stop me so so just always be careful okay um and once again like i said you know you guys can always make the corned beef um the way you guys seen it made at your home years ago you know but you know my mama said i've always was funny when she used to cook, um, I want to say it was ham hocks. I would tell her, save me some ham, but I don't want none of them hocks. Like, you know, I didn't know the difference as a child, but, you know, um, I've always been a funny eater. You know, I've either smelled my food or, <laughs> you know, like I won't eat at certain people's house. You know, I've always just been funny like that. But guess what? It keep me from getting sick. I promise you that much. Okay. All right, so I was just jaw jacking for a minute while I get some of this meat off and, you know, just telling you guys just a little bit of, about some of, you know, the funny moments that I've had growing up when it comes to food. And um, so now, if you can notice, I've got most of this fat off. This is quite a bit of fat right here, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and get this placed because it is seasoned with all the seeds. We're just going to place this inside of our crock pot now. And we're going to put some seasoning. I'm going to put this butcher seasoning. I'm going to put my Malibu. I need to get some more. And we're going to put some pepper. Then we're going to put the top on it, and then we'll be back. It's been about four and a half hours since I put the corned beef in the crock pot. We're just going to check and see what it's starting to look like. It actually started to make its own water, and let's see, the vegetables have already... Now you see, they kind of stayed the same size, but we didn't want to make them too small. And you can tell that this brisket... It's starting to actually get the smoky flavor in it. It's starting to brown. So we're just going to put the top back on it for about four and a half more hours. We'll be back when it's time to shred it and get the cabbage and bok choy fried up. Okay, everyone. It's been a little bit over 10 hours and I've periodically came back and forth throughout the night to check on the corned beef. And it's about 730 in the morning now. So we're going to see what it's looking like. And... Yeah, that thing is breaking up really good. Um, if you notice, it's not a lot of juice in there, liquid. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and continue to break this up. Now, it doesn't need any seasoning to it. You don't actually want to season your corned beef because it's already seasoned and it'll be too salty. I was told mine was too salty last year, so... That's why this year I'm doing it this way and, um, you know, just making sure that it's broke down properly. So the next thing I'm going to do is just continue to break this down and then we're going to go ahead and get a sandwich made up. So before I start to make the sandwich up, I just wanted you guys to see um, what the corned beef is looking like and how much is actually in here. I'm just going to get a small spatula just to show you. It's not a lot, and which is good for me because... I've always tend to buy more than I can eat, and my mother always called me the microwave queen, meaning I'm going to get a big plate of food and put the rest in the microwave, and she may find it there the next day, but that's when I was a kid, okay? I, I eat all my food now. I eat grown woman meals, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that you don't have to get a super huge corned beef um, or when you're buying like briskets, you don't have to get a super big one unless you know you're going to be eating on it for two or three days. Me personally, I just want to eat the sandwich with the fried cabbage today and then tomorrow make a little homemade mashed potatoes with it to eat the corned beef on top. And then we won't be eating this by Tuesday. It'll be done. So let's go ahead now and get the sandwich made. All right. So I have... <clears throat> 
a hoagie bread that I toasted already. All I'm going to do is just get a little bit of this mustard. You can take um, any dressing that you want. Corned beef hash to me is like pastrami. So I'm going to eat it the same way. I'm going to put my mustard on top. I love mustard. That's probably my favorite condiment. I'm going to spread it out. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of this corned beef. Now you can put whatever you want on top. Cheese. Maybe later I might melt some cheese and make it like into a patty melt. For those that don't like bread, you can always use a wrap. Um, you know, it's up to you. So, here we go. And this is, you know, I'm not going to put a lot of meat. So, <clears throat> there's the meat. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just put two or three pickles on top. Actually, a little more. Okay. And this is how I like to eat mine. So, the next thing I'm going to do is just put that fork in the sink. And just close the bun up. And then I'm just going to cut it in half. Okay, that bread was a little crispy, so it started to crumble a little bit, but that's okay. Let's go ahead now and put the top back on the rest of the corned beef. And... Here's my sandwich. Um, i just going to go ahead now and get that fried cabbage made up for later on. It's about 7 a.m., so it's a little early and it's raining. And uh, we'll get this made up before everybody really starts celebrating St. Patrick's Day. All right, so thank you guys for watching my video. Hope you guys found an easy way to make your corned beef hash. And also, if you would like to leave a message at the bottom as a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. Let me know what you liked about the video, what you don't like, what I should improve with. And until next time, take it easy.